was probably 99. I had a show in Jackson. And it was like 2,000 people in there. Before I came on, they were saying, boosted, 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 boosted. Even in Louisiana, I never had nobody chant my name before I go on stage. And like, ever since then, like, you know, like, I just felt I was that nigga. Like, I just felt people really loved me, you know. That put something in my head, like that tiger in me, like, you know, like, I had been out like a year and a half then, and the whole motherfucking arena in Jackson was like, boosted, boosted, like, they knew every song, and like, I went back to Louisiana, like, like y'all can't fuck with me. If you find a 50 in here, I'm pussy. If you find a 50 in this motherfucker, I'm pussy, nigga. Rambo, Hollywood, fuck you. I wipe my ass with this, nigga. Okay. I'm fucking hang in time, man. Shit. Let's get back to it. Hold on, man. 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 Hold on, we paid 20 G's for it. I got the Jacob on. I got the necklace on. The boots are bad ass nigga. You know, I be swimming in the pool of honey. Where my little nigga at? Right here, right here. Hold on. We gotta wait for two to bad ass. Two, come on. Part two, they got a two of me. Yeah, he coming in stores real soon. The first four-year-old rapper. Tootie, look at the camera. Look at the, put them foes up, Tootie. Where you from? <laughs> put them up. Hey, 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 look at this. Hey, I still remember the first time I heard Boosie Badass, or Little Boosie, which was what he was called at that time. The year was 2005, if I'm not mistaken. I was coming out my apartment complex on the way to the studio, and there was a military dude in the parking lot cleaning his car with his music on blast. The first thing that struck me about the music was the delivery of the person that was rapping. The second thing that struck me was the screechy voice of the rapper behind that delivery. My first thought was to go and ask him whose music it was. And when I did, he looked at me and he said, what you don't know Lil Boosie and Webby? Right at that point, I knew that it was gonna be something big. Bling bling, nigga, neck kind of right tonight. Nigga, 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 neck kind of right tonight. Nigga, let me give me shine on, shine on. Nigga, let me give me shine on, shine on. Nigga, let me give me shine on. And the only thing I can really attribute it to now or like kind of align it to when I think about it is going to be the emergence of screwed music and Mike Jones and Paul Wall, which are two other artists that I heard at that uh, in and around that same time. And I don't know what it was about 2005, but I want to say that can probably be traced back to the the sewn in lockdown of the South had on the game. A few months later, after constantly hearing his music, I finally got a chance to kind of put eyes to that voice that I had been hearing. And when I finally seen him, it was on a platform that I was very familiar with. It was, uh, 
hip hop DVD by the name of Smack DVD. And he was on there with his partner Webby that the military dude mentioned to me. And they was on there freestyling, talking about how they was legends in the game already. And I was confused and baffled to the to the point where I was thinking to myself, how could they be legends in the game when this is the first time I'm seeing them? Not knowing that he been in the game and doing his thing since the age of age 17. Boosie Badass is from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and attended McKinley High School. Yeah, we right now, we at the beautiful site in Baton Rouge, man. We at the river. Riverside Casino. We got the old USS Kid boat right there. Of course, the Mississippi River. It's a pretty sight right here, man. I took a lot of nights walking thinking right here. Right down the street from our neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? This is the river. This is what I represent, Baton Rouge, right here. This me. Until I die, man, Baton Rouge, you know? Rouge, you just, you know, it's all the way street. It's all the way gangster, from the bottom to the top, across that track, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's all a nigga know, you know what I'm saying? It's all, it's all, it's all we know, you know what I'm saying? So that's why, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I get carried away with it, you know? It, 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 it been times, it been times, you know what I'm saying? People over me, be like, damn. You wearing that motherfucker out. She say something, you wearing that motherfucker out, but you know what I'm saying? That just, it just like, that just like boosted badass when I say that almost when I'm coming on every song. Cause I'm gonna let you know who I be. And I'm always say something from the, from about the south cause that's my hood. You know what I'm saying? And, and, that's, and that's all, and I, that's how I start making it. You know what I'm saying? This, this what made me do this. You know what I'm saying? My mom ain't teach me to be no gangster. The streets did this, you know what I'm saying? It's said that Boosie got his start in the game from a guy by the name of Young Bleed, who is also said to be Boosie's cousin. Young Bleed released a song by the name of How You Do That There, which featured Master P and was possibly signed to No Limit at some point in time. He's going to be the one that's responsible for introducing Boosie to another Baton Rouge rapper by the name of c in the 1990s. And extending Boosie an invitation to join a group by the name of Concentration Camp that had several rappers down with it. And this was in 1996 at the age of 14. Boosie would eventually get his chance to debut with the group in 2000 on CeeLo's fifth album, It's a Gamble, and Concentration Camp's third studio album, Camp 3, Thug Brothers. When Young Bleed eventually departed from the group, that opened up a space for where Boosie can become a bigger figure in concentration camp. And then that same year of 2000, in which he debuted, he released his debut album by the name of Youngest in the Camp. But it would be in the year of 2001 where, it, where things would begin to change for Boosie because that's when he joined Trail Entertainment, which was CEO'd by none other than Pimp C. I know you heard how I'm living. Yeah, I'm in and out of prison for my steady, dirty piss. My grandma, she was wishing I was more like my brother. My brother, she be tripping because she know I'm a hustler. And last night I blacked out. Man, I damn near died. Blood pressure 110. I got sugar inside. Now I got to put a needle in my stomach and thigh. Plus, I got to hear a needle in my mama to cry. I go out behind my dog. I don't even know why. Now I got to let them fly since they done blacked his eye. It ain't too many Likely boots, you can't need much lie. They make believe. I ain't nothing like Jay Z and I, nigga. Niggas counting money on camera. I started all this shit, man. That's why I'm the king. I'm the fucking king of bad rules. You know, and it, and, it, and it go way deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? It go way deeper than that. I've been doing this shit since I was 14, 11 years. 
last album, 300,000 300, records sold, one video. As long as I keep my basic basic income, I mean, I'm rich for fucking life, man. Straight up, I'm doing three shows a week, man. Internet can't get a million, a million, a million dollars a year. I was just shows, that ain't counting ringtone money and all that shit. Internet, he ain't no hustler. You know what I'm saying? I don't respect no nigga who doing bad and who was on at one time. 2006 is where you could say everything was all good for Boosie. All my trophies right here, look. These are all my trophies. I'm fooling that basketball, boy. Believe that. This is my award, 97, 98, most, most outstanding player, you know what I'm saying, from McKinley High, 10th grade. The littlest thing on the coast. This is my grandpa right here. This is my grandpa. We miss him too. He died in, I think, 91. This is my big dog right here, you heard? This is what I'm talking about. See this nigga here? This nigga been with me since I was four years old. Since we was busting pinatas with bats, you know what I'm saying? To whoop a nigga's head with gas. Money. If it don't make dollars, then it don't make sense. Yeah, his grandma house right here. Everybody just stay here. Got an old car, kitchen stove. Refrigerator been here since 1976. Still pulling out. Everybody in the family stay here all night. My grandmother room, this is where she lay her head in, in red. This used to be my room, till I was, you know, till they put me out. This used to be my room. Still love them, though. This is where we watch our sports center back here. Hey, Bobby, this is how we stay, bro. room. She love up flavors and all that. This is when we got like y'all sports in there. See, it's already on. <laughs> it's already on. Look. Yeah. This is our watch room. House been here 50 years. Still standing up. Been through three hurricanes. It ain't stopped yet, baby. We click right here, nigga. We click tight. If you don't know it, you better ask somebody. You heard me? This my nigga Lock right here. This my nigga Chip right here. This my nigga Bleak right here. This my uncle here, the D. Come here, B. Come here, B. B. This my cousin Bronson. He just came home. And he retarded already. Come here, nigga. This my cousin Sharp. Floor. He hitting hard, nigga. We ain't too deep. When you're too deep, you get you got too many chances of niggas being rats. You know niggas already rat. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, nigga used to be your barber, now they rat on you. So Damn. you know what I'm saying? That's how we gonna do it. This is right here, baby. This, you know what I'm saying? This family. Once upon a time in the parking lot, a nigga had a party. Like, go ahead with this retarded now. Meet me outside the club, nigga, with the killers on. Yeah, yeah, dog. We on Chip One Street right now, dog. If you want to catch us down here, dog, come right down here on Chip One. Me. He released his major label debut album, Badass, which contained the smash single Zoom, which featured Young Jock, and was growing heavy around the nation and picking up a lot of steam on the airways. Along with the Badass release. He also released a DVD that contained the combination or came in combination with the CD where he explained the death of his father, him dealing with diabetes, and also the love that he had for his grandmother. Smoking that Memphis Grizzly, nigga. Oh, yeah. Get a good look at it. Perfect. Smoking on perfect. 
ease my mind. This that shit that we get high to. Yeah, it's murder, murder, murder. Gotta keep you nine. This that shit that we ride to. Bro, he broke. Yeah, that nigga name. That nigga always broke. Ba 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 boosie. Ba ba boosie. The Lord is out. Ba ba boosie. Talk about talk about. Ba ba boosie. Giant square best in the world. Real convict. All the way, all the way, Carvin. So that's all we got on here. So, I thank God it made me to be so. Already know I'm living rough and rugged, right? You a big chip wall, big dog, my nigga. I mean, it's high. I mean, this gorilla ain't on my back for nothing. Do you see this, young man? You better zoom in on that. Dude. The gorilla ain't on my back for nothing. I mean that. You see it tearing up all chip wall, chip wall sign. I mean that. You see that over here? This how we do it. Rough and rugged, my nigga. You better spank it when you see me. Gangster, nigga. It's that real shit on the DVD, nigga. Y'all gonna feel this shit. This my nigga Bullet, you heard me? We chew all, we don't pay for that, nigga, you heard me? He gonna chew me out all the time, you know what I'm talking about? I mean that. Why? Who it is? What up? We thugging right is? now on Chippewa. I don't know what Terrence said, he bullshit. It's Chippewa Youngin right here, nigga. That's hustling play. We gotta do this hustling play. Day to day hustling play, but every day, all day. That's all we gonna do, you know what I'm saying? We gonna do what we gotta do, you know what I'm saying? Believe that. We running the streets and the pen. Me and Taj, it ain't too many on weed that ran through, believe that. No, I mean, we got If he ain't got you, I got you. Say my name on the motherfucking record, nigga. I'ma burn your ass. It's gonna be some pocket big shit again. I'ma burn one of you, nigga. And you can get it, nigga. Come get it like I told you. Another motherfucking day, shit. Fucking mama house and burned down. This was in this motherfucker yesterday. Motherfucker and burned down. Lost all my motherfucking pictures. Both three pair of rims, two gavins, a couple stacks. Mostly all my motherfucking memories though, you know, all my baby pictures. All my grandma pictures and shit. Look at my motherfucking spinners burnt up, man. This is what I be talking about right here when nigga talking about nigga going through some things. It be that real shit right here, you know what I'm saying? Feel like a nigga can't win for losing, man. Boy. Fucking fire started from the back, you know what I'm saying? From the break of all bad wires and shit. Went all the way through, you know what I'm saying? I was in my motherfucking bed. My mama called me, you know what I'm saying? She like, the house been burned down. That's my grandma one week, the house the next week. Nine months before that, my dog eyes, rest in peace, you know what I'm saying? Nine months before that, some good gotta happen. Too much Five motherfucking self, you know what I'm saying? I can't have this walking on no fucking plane, sitting in first I-10 dope zone. People like, man, people be reading that shit like, oh my God. What's it say? It says I-10 dope zone. What's that about? Uh, this is how we used to get it before we got to sell a CD. <laughs> down I 10? Yeah, down I 10. So, um, this the I 10 dope zone. And people be like, when they read it, oh, he's a fucking drug dealer. That's how they be on the plane, because I'm sitting next to them. And they be like, damn, he's first class too, so shit. So, I be tucking this in. I don't like to profile myself as, as a drug dealer. I didn't know all I do is smoke drugs now. But, that's how people profile you when you wear this kind of piece. And I paid 50000 for it. Cash. So, uh, that's how people profile you when you wear this shit. So, I don't wear this shit. Because I sell CDs. I don't sell drugs no more. I don't have to sell drugs. And, I, and, and I'm in Cali, but I'm still, I'm, I'm Baton Rouge. Like, nigga, we smoking big blunts. 10 gram blunts, nigga. We put 10 grams a piece in a blunt. <laughs> yeah. Who's the bad ass live in California? Nigga, get at me, nigga. <laughs> Going to Compton in a me. Nigga, love me in Compton. I fuck with y'all. What up, E? What up, easy, nigga? We gon' we gon' make it happen. We gon' make it happen, nigga. I mean that. I gon' fuck with Cali, nigga. I love y'all niggas up here, nigga. Fuck. At my mama house, nigga. Gotta put out the blunt. 
You know I smoke, but I just don't. In December of 2006, he dropped the Streets Is Mine mixtape with DJ Drama under his popular brand Gangsta Grills, which featured appearances by Webby. And that was just the beginning of the seeds of what him and Webby was pretty much about to do to the music game. Dog right here, boosty badass, you know? We're a legend in the streets right now. I just hope these bitch ass niggas let me live to see this case. Oh, we gonna get that money. I'm telling you, cause I'm fucking with Smack DVD. They done fuck with 50 Cal. Ghost face, now they fucking with the real down south legends. Boosty saying Webby, nigga, get your fucking mind. Dog, you need that, get money. Crazy DJ in the motherfucking building. Lil Boosie, what's good, man? World premiere. What's up, man? You just heard the hit Superfly, baby. We coming at you hard, man. It's Lil Boosie and I got my dog Lil with it. What's up? Yeah, give me that. They fuck with it, I fuck with it. And y'all already know about fuck with it. It's all the way gangsters, all the way savages, all the way thugs out. Go get that savage life out of Mr. Stores. Right now I'm out with bitch. I'm back to thugging it. I always be dug in my grill, don't come out, nigga, because I'm a permanent gangster, nigga. I don't plan to be no gangster. Nigga. Not too long after that is where the world probably began to know them when they released a song called Wipe Me Down, which was a remix to a song done by a rapper named Fox that was also on Trill Entertainment. In 2008, everything came to a head when he was featured on Webby's chart-topping single, Independent, which was just on a whole nother level from the success that they had experienced previously. Boosie would go on to release his second major album, Superbad, The Return of Boosie Badass, which featured songs like Better Believe It, featuring Webby, and Young Jeezy, and also feature videos for songs like I'm a Dog and Loose as a Goose. On October 22nd, 2008, Boosie was arrested after an East Baton Rouge Sheriff's deputy found marijuana and a gun in Boosie's car. Boosie pled guilty to his third offense, possession of marijuana charge, on September 22, 2009. He was sentenced to two years in prison the next day. The judge in the case doubled the sentence on November 10, after finding Boosie had violated probation while awaiting sentencing. In local HD news. A local rap artist is serving a 10-year prison sentence tonight. Torrance Lobusi Hatch pleaded guilty to third offense marijuana possession charge and later violated his probation. Our Keitha Nelson sat down with Hatch in his Baton Rouge home during his last hours as a free man. Keitha. That's right, Donna. Now, Torrance Hatch agreed to do this interview because he wanted to let his fans know that he's staying strong and they, he wants them to do that as well. Now, Hatch also wants people to know that there's a difference between the music he makes and the life he lives. You They treat me on who I, who, who they think I am. You know, they treat me on Boosie. They judge me on Boosie, badass, and not Torrance Hatch. For Torrance Hatch, better known to fans as Little Boosie, the music has not stopped. It's simply been faded for now. Hatch was handed a 10-year jail sentence after pleading guilty to a third offense marijuana charge and later violating his probation. His lengthy rap sheet includes marijuana possession, weapons charges, resisting an officer, and aggravated battery. I blame it on myself because, you know, the things I did, I wanted to do it. This 26-year-old rap artist and father of seven 
with one on the way, admits he's no angel. Hatch tends to do things his way, sometimes putting himself in sticky situations. It's some trouble, easy to get in, but it's hard to get out. Local rapper Torrance Hatch, better known as Lil Boosie, was arrested today on aggravated second-degree battery charges. Another local rapper is in trouble with the law. Local rapper Torrance Lil Boosie Hatch pleaded guilty this afternoon to drug and gun charges. Get her, dude. She always beats. Here's another look at Hatch. Not the artist, the man. We caught up with him the night before he went into prison. Hatch revealed his fears and concerns about being behind bars and away from them. I won't be able to see my child born. Yeah, that hurt. Dripping in diamonds, shining on the outside. Hey, I get that man. For Hatch, deep down, things are dim. Raised in what some might call a dark place in South Baton Rouge, Hatch warns others about the dangers of these streets. The school is the first thing. You know, once you stay in school and make up your mind you won't be somebody, the negative's gonna, gonna add out and stay away from negative people. You know, God, God made me one of the few to ever make it out of my neighborhood to be, be somebody positive. Even though some people might question whether or not Hatch is a positive role model, he says there's one thing that cannot be questioned. His giving heart. I just love putting smiles on people's faces. Lil Boosie tends to do that through his music. Walking through his home, you could feel the adulation. Hatch surrounds himself with family and friends, always. So you said family makes you feel safe? Yeah, protected. Without his protection while behind bars, well, you can read it on his face. Lil Boosie, Torrance Hatch, is scared. On November 9th of 2009 at 9 a.m., Hatch was sentenced and sent to prison. He's expected to serve about two years behind bars with five years of probation once he gets out. Hatch failed to follow the judge's orders. He was on house arrest but chose to leave his home more than once. Hatch tells me he felt as if he had no choice. He was sued by promoters for missing his concert dates and feared that missing more shows would send him into bankruptcy. Now, Hatch is currently serving his time in the Wynn Correctional Center. And uh, Donna, that's, of course, in Winfield, Louisiana. So he was spending his last time with his kids when you were talking to him. That's right. Thank you, Keith. Okay. I'm coming up. Feel the audience in on what's going on with it, man. Uh, I got a big trial coming up, you know. September 28, you know, I need all my fans to support me, you know, pray for me, you know. Exactly. I ain't even a convicted felon, and they're trying to, you know, take me down. So it's, it's big, you know. I just need all my support from my fans, you know. There we go, man. You heard it from Boosie himself. It's going down. It's time for that spit. We're going to get back to what we do on the deal, man. Boosie, do what you do, brother. I'm rough and tough with my to Try your luck, bet some bucks. I'm going to drop these nuts. Talking, but I don't hear him say they stalking, but I don't see him on my bad side. I wouldn't want to be him. Let's get back to the facts. I'm making stack for stack. Never thought in a million years people are hate like that. For my respect, I get loose as a goose, man. It's the truth. Play with me, get blues, man. Put you on the news, man. Real retarded F was I'm a 40, man. Sharpshooter, I could take you to the gun range. I ain't gonna miss you, boy. If they gonna miss you, boy, when I draw down, I'm gonna make this. Kiss you, boy. How you gonna play or hate somebody who certified? Put this thing. They say goodbye. Wow. <laughs> you know it's it going is. Down. It's what it is, man. Hey, you right. 50 cent. Okay, okay, okay. You right. You watching this. Rumors in the streets begin to swirl about a beef between Boosie and another Baton Rouge rapper, Nussie, over some of his promotional tactics for an up and coming CD he was releasing. Nissy Badass and Boosie Badass. What's, what's, what's the deal with that? Well, to be honest with you, Nissy Badass really was just like a joke. So um, I jumped in the car with one of my partners, and um, they was making fun of me because mm -hmm. I had wanted to start rapping. Mm -hmm. And he like, what's up, Nissy Badass? And when he said it, everybody fell out laughing. And I mm -hmm. said, you know what? I'm doing it. So that's how Nissy Badass came about. My partner Pete, we cracking a joke about it. You know, it, was, it wasn't nothing to try to offend nobody or nothing like right. that or to come up. It was like I had did it. Because I had wanted to, I always think about marketing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I thought it would be an easy way to catch people ear, and it worked. It did. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I did it. I took Boosie album cover, took him off, put me on it, and I did it. But once you listen to the album, I had no diss. It wasn't a diss record. It just was something to, I wanted to just be different, be exclusive, you know. A lot of people 
took it the wrong way. A lot of people understood what I was doing, and they commended me for it. And um, the music spoke for itself. Okay, so going into that, what, what separates what separates you from the Boosies and the um, know, the, the Foxes and? Yeah, well, I just I'm a, I'm a, I'm a myself. I'm just a street nigga trying to convince you I can rap. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the streets really vouch for me. They really support me. I, I did everything really like the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. I got out in the streets and my grind, and I promoted myself. You know, mm -hmm. see, I'm the CEO and the artist. I ain't got no stepdaddies with this shit. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I jumped in the game, I just did it. And um, I started rapping off rumors. Mm -hmm. I always talk about what people shoot you about. Mm -hmm. I'd be like the only person who will really say it, and they'll be shoot showing so I say it out loud, right. you know. And um, everybody liked it. I liked doing it, and I just kept pushing. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much let the streets tell me what to do, you know. I just put the, I make my material easy for people to get. And once people are hearing it, they like it, you know. So who, who, are, who, are, who are some of your influence? Who are some of, your, some of the people that just made you decide, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this and do it? Um, rapping um, influenced me to rap. I'm a fan of rap music. I, just, I, like, I listen to all kinds of music just besides rap. Mm -hmm. I just, I did it because I know how, I'm, I'm, I'm caught up in the streets, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm really caught up in the streets and... I want, I, like I said, I'm a thinker. I always mm -hmm. think a lot. And a couple of dudes got killed, and it was like my name came up. And I said, well, I know how I can address him. I was in the studio one day with one of my partners, and um, I said, let me say something on this motherfucker, you know? Mm -hmm. But I wanted to say something to address the issue, mm -hmm. and I did it. Mm -hmm. and, it and, and I just playing with the mics really mm -hmm. influenced me to start rapping. But my point got across, you know? Right. And um, basically, I didn't do it, but ain't nobody believed me. But later on down the line, a couple months later, they found out I didn't do it. Ain't nobody apologized to me for it, so I'm mad now. So I'm like, let's get it on, you know? When you say they never apologized to you before? No, no one. Before? Just just the streets. Ain't nobody said, well, damn, listen, bro. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people's words, they, they say a lot of things, but their actions show differently. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I had a car wash in South Baton Rouge. Somebody mm -hmm. was throwing bombs at it, trying to set it on fire. Mm -hmm. Somebody passed by one of my houses and shot at it. Mm -hmm. So... Your action, but on the streets, I'm not hearing nobody got no beef in me. Don't nobody want to do nothing with me. Mm -hmm. But your action showing when you're doing a little sneaky shit. You see what I'm saying? So I started rapping, let niggas know I ain't do it. But if you don't believe me, sell it up. Let's let's just do it. Not long after that, while Boosie was serving time on the gun possession and the marijuana charge, on June 17, 2010, he was indicted on federal charges of first-degree murder of Terry Boyd. He also faced charges of three counts of possession with the t intent to distribute narcotics, codeine, ecstasy, and marijuana. Boosie adamantly stated that he is innocent of all charges. District Attorney Hilla Moore stated that the killing seemed to be over a turf war. If convicted, Little Boosie would be facing a death penalty. Right. Several hundred people will arrive in downtown Baton Rouge tomorrow. Twelve of them will eventually be selected to hear the murder case against Baton Rouge rapper Lil Boosie. In the world of rap, Torrance Patch is a superstar known to fans around the world as Lil Boosie. His lyrics have won him several notable awards, but those same lyrics are a part of what prosecutors plan to use against Boosie as they try to convince a jury he orchestrated a murder for hire from behind bars, claiming words in his songs allude to murder and money. There's not a rap artist, a hip hop artist alive who raps gangster rap that does not use these terms. The rapper's legal team is headed up by Jason Williams, a defense attorney from New Orleans who's well known in legal circles there. Boosie's mother says she feels good going into the trial and has confidence in the lawyers representing her son. Because I feel that I have two strong leaders that's representing my son and I know he did not do it. A Baton Rouge native, Boosie first landed in prison back in 2009 after pleading guilty to a third offense marijuana offense and violating his probation. Once behind bars, the 29-year-old father of eight is accused of hiring this man, Michael Loudon, to kill a man on the outside. Loudon, who's still waiting to go to trial himself, is expected to be a star witness for the prosecution. Prosecutors have been tight-lipped about their strategy for trial and have not publicly talked about possible motive. 
Courthouse security will be at high levels and press conferences, normally held on the sidewalks outside, have been moved inside. In a rare move, jurors will be referred to only by the numbers, not their names. Those jurors who are selected will be sequestered, kept in a hotel away from their families during the trial. We're here all the time, we work in the systems, jurors do not, and they need to this as something they're not supposed to get used to, and we'd like to make them as comfortable as possible. Despite his serious legal troubles, many of Boosie's fans have stayed loyal with postings of Free Boosie, common on the internet. A statement jurors will soon be asked to decide if they believe. Prosecutors are keeping a close eye on a key witness in a high-profile murder case in Baton Rouge. They say he's faced intimidation from people possibly tied to rapper Little Boosie. Let's get you up to speed. Little Boosie, whose real name is Torrance Hatch, is accused of hiring Michael Louding to kill Terry Boyd. Investigators say Louding is tied to six murders. Louding will likely testify against Boosie during his trial in April. News News' Chris Nakamoto gets answers on why there's concern about possible intimidation of the star witness. Prosecutors believe the intimidation tactics are being used to prevent or water down testimony from Michael Louding. They say it's tough to get the truth when witnesses are pressured. Within the past year inside the East Baton Rouge Parish Prison, the district attorney's office intercepted letters, phone calls, and people who have approached Michael Louding in jail. Prosecutors say those people are tied to Lil Boosie and are trying to contact Michael Louding to chill his testimony. In court Tuesday, defense attorneys for Lil Boosie tried to get Louding to testify. They claim he recanted his statements, which incriminated Lil Boosie in the murder for hire case. Let him take the stand. Let him say what the truth is. The DA's office jumps up. They don't, they don't want any part of it. They don't want to allow him to make a record explaining that he lied. He's going to testify at trial. He's going to, he's going to be called at trial. That's the appropriate time for him to testify. They will have a full opportunity to cross-examine him at that time. Prosecutors say the typical precautions they would take to protect a witness are proving to be quite difficult because the case's star witness is already in jail. Normally, a witness would be put in a hotel or monitored closely to make sure contact is limited by people who might try to silence them. Despite what prosecutors say, defense lawyers for Lil Boosie claim none of his supporters or family members have ever tried to intimidate Louding. Defense lawyers we spoke to say there has been absolutely no contact between Lil Boosie and Michael Louding since their arrests. Just chilling, bro. You know, uh, during this time, I just want everybody, you know, to keep supporting me. Uh, I got the um, BoosieJustice.com going. I got the U.S. University going. So I just want everybody, you know. All right, so up. spell it out real quick. Spell it out so all your Boosie badass fans can go in there and, and support you. Boosie Justice, uh, J-U-S-T-I-C-E dot com. Uh, you got Aiden, Aiden. H-A-T-I-N University, and, uh, you know, it's just, just talking about what's going on in my situation and how, you know, I need people to reach out to, uh, to the people. you know, just to people and let them know, you know, the good side of me and, you know, everybody judging me on, uh, on the, uh, on the bull stuff and lies about me, so, you know, I just need everybody to support me, you know, and tell them, uh, you know, like, what my music means to them and, and things like that, because that's what they trying to really judge me on my music. Oh, man, come on, homie, man, we all know that it's just entertainment. If that was case, then they were going to lock up half the actors and entertainers for what they do and say on the movie screen. I just want to tell you, I'm still happy. I'm <laughs> I mean, you sound good, big homie. You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm being strong. You know? Alrighty, so big shout out to the Triple D. Shout out to the whole state of Louisiana. Boost the badass live via satellite, huh? Yeah. I bet you ain't got no freestyle for us. Get some of that. Give some of that. Give some of that, some of that boosted behind the wall. Give me. Come on, man. Give me something, man. I I, I just tell them, I got like, you know, 400 songs wrote, you know. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I might, I might get it to you next week, baby. I right, will next week get to it, baby. You know what I'm saying? Because you know the badass fans out here are just waiting on it, man. Once again, y'all go to BoosterJustice.com. That they want to put your son to death. It is devastating. But you know what, too? I, 
I'm a praying mom, and I'm mm. from a large family of Christian people. Mm. Now, it hurts. It hurts because I know Torrance is not the person that will hurt nobody. This is what I know. And then what gets me is he has done so much for the community, especially our at-risk kids. See, that never has been displayed nowhere in the media, whereas every Easter, he will sponsor an Easter bash. Whereas he will give away 3,500 bicycles, electronic games, to students that have maintained at least a 3.0 in school. He has done this for four to five years. He has also helped a cancer victim, a little boy, he was 12 years old. His last wish before he had gone to St. Jude High School was to spend a day with Torrance. Torrance received this child. He wanted to go to the studio. He went to the studio. When it was time for treatment at St. Jude High School, it wasn't a day that Torrance did not talk to him. One day, Torrance was late going on stage because the little boy had called and he was crying and he wanted to talk to Torrance. Today, this child is 16 years. He has survived. Wow. So what I'm saying is things like that never been displayed. Also, um, here in Louisiana, we have several at-risk students in predominantly black schools, and we have a problem with attendance. So what he did for at least seven or eight years to boost up the attendance for the school system, he would purchase bicycles for schools to encourage the kids to bring up the attendance, and it worked. So they look at things as Torrance has just been a negative target, but it's not true. Go buy a bike for um, Easter um, bag. Already been to three wild marks and the target. Now I'm gonna wipe out this wild. Right now, you do? how you stakes every night? Right now we at thirty-eight thousand. Still haven't paid security. Golden Age, Baseball, uh, 2,000 bikes away free, 10,000 hours of crawfish away free, 5,000 hours in book sex and school support. The stuff they talk about, some of them don't do it, but a lot of them do. He says some of Lil Boosie's songs should offer some clues. People who talk about murder, they're involved. District Attorney Hiller Moore says it's quite possible Lil Boosie is connected to a string of murders. Police recently arrested nine men for the deaths of six others. Police say Boosie is part of this web. One other name stands out. 17-year-old Michael Loudon is the only one charged with each murder. You always have a head guy and you find these little youngsters that you can row by and give a couple of dollars to and then Oh, I got the job. He says Boosie even alluded to this in his song. This man says violence is the cycle of the streets, a way for people to make a name for themselves. You can wake up the next day and still be living. You shoot Boosie someone, you take a life, life, but you're going to get your life taken. You can't get away with everything. The government brought up a letter from well-known rap star Kevin Gates' uncle, Lee Lucas, who he references in several of his songs. The letter allegedly stated that Boyd was getting out of prison, and he said that he was going to, quote, Jack and slap you. During trial, Boosie's defense attorneys asked, where is that letter, and why didn't Lee Lucas testify? Only time would tell how this one would play out for Boosie. is 9 News at 6. He's crying and he knows from the beginning he was never guilty. Little Boosie's mother reacts to the verdict the Baton Rouge rapper found not guilty. Thank you for joining us. I'm Donna Britt. And I'm George Sells. It is the verdict heard round the world. Boosie is cleared in the murder of Terry Boyd. It took jurors only an hour to come to their decision. Tiana Williams is live near district court where the verdict was welcomed with cheers by some outside there. Tiana? That's right, Donna. While in the courtroom when that not guilty verdict was read, you could see Torrance Hatch put his fist up in the air and the judge said, son, if that was me, I would have mine up there as well too. The 
defense it, uh, lawyers in this case told the uh, jurors shortly before they made that decision, this case is not about Boosie, but who's being tried first is not the man that is being charged with the six murders in this case. Of course, we know the prosecution put on their case, but in this case, the defense was just a little bit stronger for those jurors. <laughs> If it don't fit, you must have quit. God is good. I feel good. God is good. I told y'all from jump, he's innocent. A celebration among Boosie fans outside district court as news of the not guilty verdict quickly spread. The rapper's defense team says it's a verdict they expected. I expected a not guilty. The first time we looked at the police reports and the documentation, we knew this man should be found not guilty. And we did everything in our power with God's help to prove it. You, if you find someone not guilty when the evidence doesn't support it, you enforce the law. These folks enforce the law in finding them not guilty, and, and we thank them. It was saying, thank you, Lord. A jury of nine women and three men made the decision. Nine of the jurors are black and three are white. Did that factor into the verdict? Absolutely not. I, I mean, don't think so. I mean, we had white witnesses, we had black witnesses, we had white jurors, we had black jurors, we had male, we had female, we had experts, we had layperson, and every single person, every single person saw the truth, which is that he had nothing to do with this. News the jury had reached a verdict came at 3.30 this afternoon. Police cleared the courthouse and beefed up security outside as they waited for the verdict to be announced. Innocent from John This man has been innocent. He's been innocent this whole time. Yeah. Fans across the whole world have been praying for this. Now, the defense and prosecution in this case, neither of them had a chance to, to speak with the jury. In fact, the jury did not want to speak with them. And also, the lawyers on both sides did not find out whether the verdict was unanimous or not. They needed t at least 10 votes to come back with that not guilty verdict. Obviously, they got that. That is what happened on the defense side. My colleague Kieran Chala spoke with the prosecution shortly after court. Kieran, what did they have to say? Well, Tiana, the fact that the jury came back with a verdict in an hour, the prosecution says they knew that that was not a good feeling. They are, however, pleased with the case they put on, but at the end, they say the jury spoke. Uh, obviously, they had made up their mind. They had heard enough and went back there and had enough votes and did what they did, and it is what it is. I feel, feel bad that the uh, victim's family did not receive closure from this aspect, but we have two other defendants who have actually admitted to the, their part in this crime and this murder, and they'll be tried, and hopefully we can put some closure for that family. One of those being Michael Louding or Marlo Mike. He does have a court appearance set for Monday. Now, the agreement that the district attorney, Hiller Moore, had with Louding was that he had to be truthful in every case. But now he says that he actually was not truthful in this specific case, saying there was a lot of evidence that was presented that pr contradicted a lot of the things that Louding was saying. So that will determine how his sentencing comes out and in the new near future, because he will be tried in the near future for those murders that he is charged with. But the prosecution cannot try him for the death penalty because he is underage. So again, a not guilty verdict coming out for Little Boosie today. For now, we are live here in downtown. Karen Chala and Tiana Williams with Thanks WAFB for the team News. And Boosie, by the way, is still serving time at Angola on drug charges. Now, he's expected to be released from prison within the next several months. News of Lil Boosie, not guilty verdict on the murder charge quickly made national headlines. It was the top story on the celebrity website TMZ, as well as websites like MTV and those which cover the rap music industry. Twitter was buzzing with the verdict. A reporter with Rolling Stone magazine was at the courthouse covering this week's trial. Stay with WAP9 News for more reaction to the verdict ahead at 10 o'clock tonight, including what the loss means for the district attorney's office, with the district attorney himself being placed on the stand during the trial.